New Technology's Effect on Society in the 1920s. So, the second industrial revolution. Overall, what are the effects? Well, in the 1920s, the United States is going to enjoy the highest standard of living in the world. Although there's a small post-war depression right after World War I, eventually there will be an economic boom in the 1920s. We are making more and selling more all the way up until 1929. And most of that growth is coming in consumer goods. That was possible because incomes were actually rising and people are buying on credit. And we're able to make more because of some improvements in production, like the moving assembly line, like the use of electrical power, and greater worker efficiency, really widespread implementation of that scientific management of work. The automobile industry is a good example of this growth. There's going to be a rapid growth in the number of cars on American roads during the 1920s. There's also going to be a growth in the number of cars produced every year by automobile makers. However, by the end of the 1920s, that's going to start to fall off. It's going to start to lag because many people already owned cars and were not willing and able to buy a second one. However, the automobile industry's growth also helps uh, industries related to it, like steel and rubber and paint and glass. All of those industries are going to boom during the 1920s along with the automobile industry. And at the same time that more Americans are buying cars, we'll see an explosion in the growth of suburbs around large cities. Most people work in the city. The suburbs and the car allow you to commute to work and not have to live in the city. We're also going to see the growth of new industries like gas stations and shopping centers, strip malls, as well as motels appearing to meet the needs of motorists. And we're going to see our first real challenge to the railroad industry in terms of moving raw materials and finished goods around the country with the emergence of the trucking industry. We're also going to see some growth in the electrical industry and appliances. The electrical industry grew very rapidly, and that's a big result of what's known as the use of alternating current. Alternating current allowed power to go from a plant and be transferred greater distances than the direct current that was used in the early years of electrical power. Two-thirds of the nation will have power by 1930, in large part due to alternating current. It's not that that many more plants were built. It's just that power lines can stretch a longer distance and carry power to more people. As more and more homes get power, more and more homes are going to get electrical appliances like washing machines and vacuum cleaners and refrigerators and electrical ranges. And what those lead to is less housework and more time maybe for leisure. By giving the suburbs electricity, more and more homes by the end of the 1920s are going to have some of those electrical appliances. They make housework easier and they're really going to free up women. Remember, uh, cult of domesticity, separate spheres. They're going to free up women for other activities. It's no coincidence, well, it's not surprising that this rise of home appliances leads to a trend of women working outside the home. We'll also see a growth in entertainment, and the radio industry is really going to boom in the 1920s. We have our first radio station, KDKA, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and soon thereafter there will be a lot of other radio stations around the nation. NBC forms the first national radio network, so you can hear some of the same shows in different cities. And one of the most popular shows of the time is very telling of the time, and that was Amos and Andy, a popular radio show in which two white comedians pretended to be black. So the popularity of that Amos and Andy show really shows the racism still present in the 1920s. The film industry will also see a large growth. Film will thrive in the 1920s. There are huge theaters in every major city. If you've ever been to the Ohio Theater, uh, or the Palace Theater in downtown Columbus, 
those are examples of the types of theaters that were popular and filled during the 1920s. The film industry sold an average of 100 million tickets per week, and that was in a nation with only 120 million people. So five out of every six people were going to see a movie every week. Other industries are gonna grow at this time, especially those aided by improvements in science. So light metals such as aluminum and magnesium are gonna see their industries grow and oil and natural gas as a new fuel and heat source replacing coal is also on the rise. The results of chemical engineering lead to some new products, some synthetic products that are gonna become popular with consumers. Heat, resistance gla or heat resistant glass cookware, rayon stockings, butane lighters, all of these are um, consumer products that are a result of chemical engineering. It's not surprising corporations will dominate at this time. There are a lot of stockholders during the 1920s, so many so that it's rare for one person to own more than 5% of a company. All the profits and all the new stockholders of the time allowed corporations to internally finance the growth of their companies. They don't need to bring in big investors like JP Morgan anymore because they're selling stocks and their business is growing. So they have the money to grow on their own without bringing in wealthy investors. That means that there's little accountability. Without somebody like JP Morgan, without somebody owning more than 5% of the company, there's no one really saying, whoa, 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 maybe we shouldn't do that. So it's possible that corporations in the 1920s took more economic risks as a result of this. We also see mergers being very popular. Big corporations are buying out small companies, so much so that by 1929, the top 200 corporations, only 200 corporations, controlled 50% of the wealth in American business. Some of the industries really dominated by, or that are really monopolized at this time, automobiles and public utilities are the most monopolized industries at this time. We mentioned the growth in consumer goods, and that's really a result of marketing. It's at this time that businesses start convincing consumers that their wants are actually needs, and that's done through marketing, through advertising. And two of the leading men uh, in that marketing field are Edward Bernays and Bruce Barton. And these advertising agencies are gonna hire psychologists to learn what appeals to the public. They're gonna work hard to make their brand names familiar nationwide. They're gonna push things that are luxuries, like having a radio as actual necessities. Your family needs a radio. And businesses are even gonna work with service groups to show themselves as benefactors of society. They're getting rid of that old image of corporations being evil and, and taking from communities. We're also gonna see the growth of chain stores. Even banks will get into the chain store business as national banks are allowed to create branches in separate states. So we'll see banks growing uh, and, and banking corporations being run all over the country. Chain stores are gonna push out small local retailers. Uh, chain stores like A&P, which was a food, a grocery store, is gonna push out local grocers. Woolworths is a general store. It's kind of like a Walmart. Uh, and they pushed out other general stores, much like Walmart has done by undercutting prices. You can see right there on their sign, it says five and dime. And also Rexall and Liggett's are um, uh, uh, pharmacies. That are going to push out local pharmacists. Overall, the mass production of the era is going to lead to a lot of uniformity and standardization. People will be buying the same products around the country. And as a result, sectional differences, sectional differences in food, in dress, and even things like furniture really began to disappear. For example, Accents are drastically diminished as a result of radio and film. 
people go to the movies and see actors talking one way or they listen on the radio and hear people on the radio talking a certain way and they start to emulate that and not talking the way people from their region of the country always talked. Overall, the new technologies of the 1920s contributed to an improved standard of living, greater personal mobility, and better communication systems, as well as a decline in sectional differences.